what are you hearing from around the league about everybody's readiness to play? I mean, uh, I know 30 teams weren't on the field seeing what happened to DeMar Hamlin, but 30 teams are, are have heard about what's happened to DeMar Hamlin, and 30 teams of players are all sitting there staring into the abyss of that could happen to me. Uh, what, what are you hearing about the readiness to play of everybody in the NFL? Well, Jets coach Robert Sala said today he just had an open forum with his players, with doctors present, so they could answer any questions. Right. Just let the players raise any concerns they have. Because, you know, th- this is real. As rare of an occurrence as this is, the reality is it played out during a shared collective TV experience with 20 million plus surely watching the game, one of the most anticipated late season, regular season games in years. So a specific trauma for those who witnessed it firsthand, but a trauma for the players and everybody else who saw it on TV. How do you get yourself ready to go back out on the field when all of a sudden this vague notion that is out at the edge of the radar screen becomes very real? And is it going to happen to me? Is it going to happen to one of my teammates? Mm. you got family members. You know, we've had so many conversations about Tua Tonga Bailoa's family and their interactions with him Mm -hmm. and whether it makes sense for him to play football this season or ever again. Every family member of every player is going to have expressed concern about them playing because that could be you. And, yes, it's extremely rare, but before it happened on Monday night, it was extremely rare, too, and it happened. So, I – I, you know, there's an argument to be made, Rich, of just shutting it all down this weekend, picking up week 18 next week in what would have been the super wild card weekend and not playing Bills Bengals at all. Just give everyone a week off. And I, I'd like to think that that topic's at least been discussed and brainstormed and they've worked it through and considered it because I think there would be value in giving players more time collectively to come to terms with what's happened and make sure that they're ready to go. Because if you're not ready to go, you know, whenever somebody retires or, or quits, people will say they quit if it's early enough in their career. We haven't played long enough to retire. Whatever it is, if a guy's not ready to play football, why would you want them to? Right. Why would you want anyone who isn't 100% committed and ready to go accept all the risks that go along with playing? Why would you put someone out there who is the slightest bit hesitant, given any set of circumstances? So I think it's a conversation that I hope has happened. I would assume is maybe ongoing at some level, and, and who knows when we're going to get news about what the league has decided to do, but I wouldn't take that off the table. What? I think it could be good for all players to take Week 18 off if that's what the league would decide. Well, in that respect, Mike, it's kind of a, a, a larger league-wide, um, uh, I guess, conversation uh, that the, uh, making Monday night football a microcosm of, which was clearly – the the players were not ready to play. They they couldn't. They couldn't pull it together, and rightfully so, because of what they just saw. What's your reporting on that whole five-minute thing? Because I, I would imagine any agents you talk to, that if there was a player that said that they felt they were forced to have to play, they would have they would have they would have be they would be chirping like crazy right now to say that the league was wrong to do what they were doing. Or is it just as simple as the officials on the field just went to whatever the normal protocol was until it dawned on everybody that this isn't a normal protocol situation. Mike? I think that's what happened, Rich. That the normal protocol, and I've talked to people around the league who have been in similar situations, this five-minute thing wasn't just pulled out of thin air. This is standard protocol, whether it's an injury that shuts the game down for a minimum period of time, weather issues, games that are just delayed by the kickoff because the game before it has gone over and they're on the same network or a different network, they don't want to overlap standalone games. That five-minute thing is not uncommon. So ESPN did not just pull five minutes out of the air. John Perry, Joe Buck did not just guess at five minutes. They were told that. Where it became problematic was when Executive VP of Football Operations, Troy Vincent, on a very late night, early morning conference call acted as if somebody had basically pulled it out of thin air. I don't know where that came from. It's ridiculous. It's insensitive. That's what he said. That creates a line in the sand that is kind of hard to walk back. And I, I think the truth is exactly what you said. They lapsed into the standard protocol until they realized this one is too serious. Now, on top of that, there may be some fascinating details that come out at some point as to who said what to whom and when. And, 
how it got to the point where someone stood up to someone from the league and said, you make us forfeit, we don't care. That may have been part of the conversation. And I'd like to think press conferences, interviews with players will shed light on exactly what happened. But it could have gotten very tense, and it could have gotten very interesting as to whether or not the Bills were going to be required to forfeit the game. Even for a very small sliver of time, that, that may have been part of the conversation, but I think we'll find out at some point.